So what I'd like to show you in this video is a really quick way of preparing audio files for remixing. And also, say you've written a piece of music and you'd like to deconstruct that to perform it live. Uh, the first part is the same as if you were preparing files for remixing, but then there's a new feature in Live 9 called uh, Consolidate Time to New Scene. This, um, rather like the duplicate time, delete time, it, it does a couple of different actions for you in one fell swoop and just speeds up your workflow a little bit. So what I'm going to do... I've got the stems for a piece of music that I've written here. Um, I've got all the individual tracks and then I've got the subgroups as well. So I'm just going to import the subgroups. Look, so we've got the drum subgroup. We've got some synths. An acoustic instrument subgroup. And we've got bass. So let's go back over to live. Now if I play this as it stands, um, it's, it's attempted to warp the individual stems. And also, uh, obviously, with something like a drum subgroup, you've probably done a fairly decent job because there's something nice and steady to tempo track from. But uh, stuff where it's maybe not quite as rhythmical or it doesn't come in, for example, for the first 32 bars, it's definitely going to have a bit, bit of trouble warping that. So if I play that as it is, you can hear it's all over the place. So what we need to do, uh, two things. First of all, on each, just hold shift, click the first clip, click the last clip just to select them all. Uh, turn warp off initially. And then for some reason, sometimes, live gets the position of the start marker incorrect. You see what sort of effect that would have on um, where each bit of audio gets played. So that is really important to make sure that on each of your clips that says zero, zero, zero. You can do that just by clicking and dragging down on these uh, three numbered boxes here, or you can use the start marker, which make sure it says zero, zero, zero for each of those in that fashion, and now fingers crossed. Cool, so that's now playing, uh, playing in time. What we need to do now is ascertain the original beats per minute of the piece of music. Now fingers crossed, if you're doing a remix for somebody, they're going to be able to tell you the original beats per minute of the track. If you wrote the piece of music yourself and you just wanted to deconstruct it, then you're obviously going to know what beats per minute the track is. But either way, you need to set the beats per minute that matches up with the original beats per minute of uh, the track that's been written. Now, trial and error way of doing this, if you're not sure, Now, something like if you've got drums, a drum subgroup like that, you take a look down here at the SEG BPM box. Like I say, with the drums, they've got something nice and steady to tempo track from. It's probably going to give you a really, um, a relatively accurate estimate of the original beats per minute of this piece of music. Although technically the SEG BPM, that doesn't actually mean the original beats per minute of the music. It means something slightly different. In certain cases, you can take that as a rough estimate of the original beats per minute. So in this case, you can see it says 119.99. So chances are that this piece of music was recorded at 120. But what you could do if you wanted to is turn the metronome on. Let's just set that, say, a couple too fast for argument's sake. So you can hear the metronome is ahead of the music. So if I just nudge that back, let's try that, 121. And you can hear it's in initially, but then the metronome gets ahead of itself again. Let's just knock that down to 120.
And there you go. So the metronome is now lined up with the music throughout the piece. Like I say, chances are you're probably not going to have to do that bit. But now we have ascertained the original beats per minute of the track. We've lined up all the starts of the clips so that they all start at 000. We can now turn warp back on. And bang, all those four stems are going to be perfectly time warped for you. So let me just take the metronome off. I'm just going to change the warp mode to Complex Pro. Um, just because I'm going to slow these down. And now everything's been perfectly warped and we can just change the tempo for if we want to change the, the style or genre of the remix that we're going to be writing. And now that uh, each of those stems is correctly warped, it makes it a lot easier to do what we're going to do next, which is pinch bits uh, from each stem and perform this action called Consolidate Time to New Scene. And like I say, this is great if you're doing a remix, you want to break things down and then build from the ground up again, or if you're wanting to uh, deconstruct your tracks to perform them live. So previously, what you would have to do is select your portion of time, or select, um, drag a box around all the clips that you wanted to transfer into session view like that, get hold of the title bar of one of them, hit tab, and then just drop them in the right place. And you can see the start and end markers are set automatically around the portion of clip that you're going to be playing. But notice that loop isn't on. So at the moment, if I just trigger that scene, each of those clips will just play through once and stop. Let me just get rid of those. Instead, what I'm going to do, or what I can do, is just select a portion of time. I don't have to rubber band each of those clips. I can just select a portion of time. I'll go create. Consolidate time to new scene, which takes a quick second to do that. And now I get a brand new scene. And you notice that loop is on now, so it's just a really quick way of breaking stuff down. I can just leave that rolling. Can maybe just pinch a, another bit like that. So I've pinched bars 33 to 41, and that's where the bass drops. So I can start to mix up the different sections of the song very quickly. I've got the bass from further down the track, I've got the drums from the very beginning. So now I've got the intro synths over the top of the rest of the music, which occurs after the drop at 33. So that is how to prepare files for remixing. That's the new consolidate time to new scene option. Great for if you're wanting to break a track down for remixing, or if you want to deconstruct your music to perform it live. Mm -hmm.